Hello, and welcome to another episode of Random Chess Person. Today I want to learn from a few of my mistakes in a recent game. Um, some people just play chess for fun, and that's fine. Personally, I see it as a skilled activity, and like any other skilled activity, say, I don't know, woodworking or photography or auto mechanics, that if something's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So I don't just play a game and walk away. I always analyze it afterwards, try to see what I did wrong so that I can get better. Now, since I'm putting it on a video, you can learn from my mistakes too, if you wish. Now here, uh, this is se only 17 moves into this game. But one mistake already that's apparent is the time. If you can see the time stamps here of how much time we have left in a 10 minute game, I've only used two minutes of t out of 10 for these 17 moves. And we've already got to a pawn and rook end game. And my opponent has used even less time. One minute and 15 seconds gone. Now, so that was one mistake. I, I need to take more time. I need to take my own advice from a previous video and just wait a little bit, not blitz out these moves because I have enough time to look around. So I shouldn't have ended up in this position in the first place, but I did. I ended up with two sets of isolated doubled pawns. My opponent has one. This here is much stronger than what I've got facing it. We both have this very unusual open file where the kings face each other, but the rooks can't get there right now to check either king. And it's white's turn. That's why white has the advantage here, I believe. Two reasons. One is this better pawn set, and two is that it's, his, it's, it's white's turn. But white doesn't take advantage of that and moves a pawn instead. So now you see the ratings graph tilt toward me. Now, I immediately take advantage of an open file. My idea, which is what should have been his idea, is to get to this second rank, or in, from my point of view, the seventh rank, which is what he should have done, uh, is to move here to get to my... Uh, well, if he had moved here, obviously he would be threatening a rook trade. But then he would have, at the end of that, would have had a rook on an open file. Regardless, I got this open file first. Uh, he moved his king out of the way, I assume, to check me. I probably should have just moved immediately one of these two pieces, but I, yeah, I made a mistake. Um, and he checked me. I got out of the way. Now, let's just go here. We did our rook trade. And the reason that was bad for me is because now he controls this open file. Uh, but I got the other one. So he comes to the seventh rank. I, I make the mistake instead of going to the opposing seventh rank. So he starts wiping out pawns. And now he's going to get this one next. Or this one. Because I, obviously I can guard one of them. But I can't guard both of them. He's going to get one of them. And whichever one he gets will create a passed pawn. If you don't know, a passed pawn is one that doesn't have anything in front of it or any other pawns that can wipe it off. Right now he doesn't have one. This one faces a pawn. This one faces a pawn. And this one faces attacks from pawns here and here. Okay. I don't like those red arrows and red circles. I prefer the blue. Regardless, nobody has a passed pawn, but he is about to get one. If he captures here, then this will be a passed pawn. If he captures here, then this will be a passed pawn. But he makes a mistake and doesn't take my pawn. He goes to guard this one. Now, the reason that's a blunder I think, is because this pawn was useless anyway. This pawn can't go anywhere. I didn't come here to attack that pawn. I came here to attack this pawn. And because he made that blunder, I can now get this pawn. If he had not done that, if he had done this instead, then I could not take this pawn. I would have had to have ta taken, captured the useless pawn. But he blundered, so I did get that pawn. But he got that. 
because as I said before, because of my mistake, he was in a better position. So now he does have a pass pawn. It's this one. No pawns in front of it or beside it. It can go as soon as his rook gets out of the way. My job, as the computer says, is to get behind this one. But uh, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I think what I was thinking is that I've got three pawns that lined up in a row here. That no matter which one moves, I'm going to start chopping pawns off. That was my idea. And I did. But now, I can't do anything to protect this pawn, which would make this one a passed pawn, getting rid of this danger square. And this one already is passed. But the other awesome thing about that for him is that now he can advance this pawn. It says the position is drawn, and the reason is because, I think, because I can get behind this one. I think at this point I can prevent both of these pawns from advancing. Um, <clears throat> but he still has one pass pawn, but the position is still drawn because I can get behind it, which I do after an intermediate check. Now this pawn cannot promote until he gets rid of my rook. Uh, he can protect it, but then if he moves it, it's not protected. So he moves it, so it is protected. But now it can't promote because I guard that square. So we start bringing our kings. And <clears throat> as you may have noticed, when I did my rook thing over here, I now created a pass pawn for myself, which he has to do something about. So this whole situation down here has to wait while we deal with my situation. And I'm now very close, very proud of myself for how close I got. I don't know what the, what I should have done here, but what I did, I think I was trying to help out somehow with my king. Regardless, right here, this is a mistake I need to learn from. It was put my king in the worst possible spot right there. Now, you see the rating bar change to a big advantage for white. The reason is because now that I have lined up these three pieces, white can simply move here, pinning my rook to my king and my pawn. Now, what that does is it means I can't move my rook. It means that if I take him here, then his pawn promotes. And he has a queen. So that's why I should not have moved my king into this horrible lineup of pieces. But he didn't see it. So that's a mistake on his part that you can learn from. In this situation, you always do that because then he can't move the rook except to capture or to put it somewhere else where it could be captured. And then you would get the queen. But instead, he just gave me that queen. And now, the reason that the bar just changed here from zero to negative minus 59, which means a huge advantage for black, is this. Our kings now stand in what's called opposition, which means his king cannot get off of this file, the h file. And it's a classic side rank or back rank checkmate with a rook and a king, which I recognized immediately from solving a bunch of puzzles. Now, his only legal move is this. I, of course, didn't see the ratings bar while I was playing, so I didn't know I was minus 60. I didn't know I had a huge advantage at this point. I just saw this pattern and realized, boom, we can get rid of these rooks. I honestly thought at this point it was going to be a draw because I forced him to put the rook here. I don't have a better move other than to take it. And then because, again, his king has no legal moves, he has to take my rook. And now I thought we were... It was a stalemate. I thought once I captured, he would come down here and capture these. And that's what we did. But, sorry, right here, this is, this is going to save me a game in the future. In, in the future, I'm going to remember this because in the future, I'm going to be in a situation similar to this and I'm not going to stalemate. I'm going to win. And the way that I would win 
is I would move this pawn forward because now this pawn guards this square, as does the king and this. And his king has to go there. You'll see what that looks like. His king has to go here. All the other squares are, these squares are guarded. That square would be just pointless on his part. So he needs to get as close to these pawns as possible, but he doesn't have time. And he wants to stay as close to that pawn as possible. It's not a passed pawn yet, but it's about to be because at some point, as soon as he moves away from it, I'm going to move my king and capture this pawn. How can I get him away from that? Well, I move my other pawn. Now, the king guards these three squares again. So this king cannot move forward. It also cannot move to these two squares because this pawn guards those. So the king only has three legal moves, here, here, and here. And if you have to move to one of those squares, you might as well capture the pawn. And now I can take that pawn and I have a passed pawn. And all he can do is try to get closer, but now it's protected. Now, no matter what he does, I can just step to the side. And now my king guards this pawn all the way forward. So even if he tries to come here, I move forward. Then he goes here, and then I get my queen. Very simple endgame tactic that I completely missed because I didn't see any way to get my king to protect these in time or to get them to my king in time. And I just ended up in a stalemate. So let's learn this lesson right here in this situation. This king cannot get there in time to capture this pawn. And has to go here. And that pawn is protected. And as long as I keep my king close touching this pawn, it's protected until he moves away for some reason, which he does here, as you see in this simulation. He has to move away, as I showed you. And now I can move my king away for one move and follow with the pawn, and there's nothing he can do. And again, no matter where... White's king moves. I can step aside and protect the pawn all the way down. Okay, well, hopefully you learned from this mistake. If not, if you're ahead of me, feel free to leave a comment explaining something that I missed or misunderstood. As always, appreciate you watching. Thank you so much.